Hello, everyone. No intro this morning. There's Brad in the workshop. <laughs> so we're just hanging out. Brad's making palais today. Palais. Le palais. Le palais. Uh, I don't know what B. It was B in French. B? Yeah, B's. Uh, le stingy stingy. Le stingy stingy. La spice. <laughs> so now that France has banned us and Quebec has banned us for today, <laughs> we can uh, get going. Uh, so my wife got me a new shirt. Bees better have my honey. Better have my honey. Bees better have my honey. <laughs> she got me another one. I'll, I'll show that one a little bit later. But um, just hanging out and uh, it was supposed to rain but it looks like the sun's starting to poke through out there oh sun that was nice and uh yeah i saw you had some of that white fluffy stuff coming down there yeah that's a nice kind way to do it. Oh, air compressor time the compressor comes right on cue we got the bigger screen because you know people like to see what brad's doing in the shop and this is a little bit easier um well while we're waiting on the compressor I'll go ahead and show this one. Uh, this is what I have right now. So if you have something different than this, and I am wrong. There we go. Yeah, then let me know. Well, the air compressor is going. Now so you can hear me now? <laughs> if that was for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the streamer going across the bottom of the current uh, current oh, Swarm Rustler Championship I, standings. I people awesome. that have submitted it in and uh if you got something other than this you gotta contact me and let me know because what i've noticed people are doing is they're posting and i'm having to find them and that's not good if i gotta find them so uh it's better if you at least tag me or hey tag me or send me an email that hey i had this here's the link and that works out a little bit better but Get you going there. So, Brad, what uh, I, I like that you're building palais today, but I would like to know, and I think you've said this before, but I'll ask it anyway. The pallets that you're building, they all have the same footprint. Is that correct? And based on your, yeah, that's exactly it, actually. But they have uh, different clips settings where you would set the clips based on whether you're running three sixes or two tens or. That's exactly it. Let me uh, just lay this out for you. So, what I'm building here is a three way palette. So, what I'll do eventually. Is I'm gonna make you big. These back cleats on here. I guess I can lower this a little bit. You'd rather see the palette than my ugly face, anyway. So put these back. Yeah. Five, of course. Then the all important part is what I call center trim. So that would be a three six, so three by six. And I've got one here for past, uh, the six frame box. See, it's just as wide, ten frame box, of course, and then it sits. It straddles two clips in there, clips in there. That's this. U clip, two inch by two inch kind of thing, and that'll mount right there in the front, in the back, both sides. Now, are those U clips something you could get from like U line or somewhere like that, or is that something you can get at a regular hardware store, or do you have to buy it from a B supply? Uh, I don't know. I I think it's a B supply thing. I'm just looking for a different one here. 
Uh, I think it's a B supply thing. And the, the deal about these is, you remember that my boxes, Canadian boxes, are made with seven eighths material. So you may recognize that as being a little thicker than a three quarter inch box that you might use in the States. So that is made to fit two of those. That would work for three quarter box, but the other way around, it wouldn't work because the clip would be too narrow. Uh, so if you're using three quarter inch box, you might want those. However, there's another clip. This is called a U clip. I have one here, but it's disappeared in the dump pile. It's called a W clip and it's wider. Uh, and the only one I have is made for a three quarter inch box. And what it has is where the where the screw holes are here, it has raised up. So the bottom of it goes down and then it comes up in the middle, maybe that far. So it actually gives you a, a gap. I don't know what it is, half inch gap or three quarter inch gap between your boxes. That's kind of nice because it allows that to stay dry perhaps and for you to clean that out. With the U-clip, these boxes sit tight against one another. That's nice for our colder weather so that the hives can share heat resources. Um, but it, it does sometimes play havoc with the boxes because you can get rot or something. You, eventually you'll get dirt and stuff that it finds its way in there. And then that collects moisture and it can rot the box. So, you know, it's a, it's a trade off. These are nice for me because they run the microfray covers. And then the covers are nice and tight together, all that sort of thing. I've got the I've got the chat up here on my big screen, so that's what I'm looking up. Thought you might have been watching eclipses or something. <laughs> watching eclipse, <laughs> eclipse, w clip and eclipse. And eclipse, that's right. So, so then that center, the center piece that you'd use as a back, you don't attach that. You you are that allows you to put it on either side if you want all the entrances facing one direction, or if you want them alternated is I'll attach everything the way it is here. And then, and again, I don't have my right in my hand, but I have a little uh, wedge piece that I could put in here. So this center, center nuke bottom board will have an opening on this end and on that end. And that's handy because uh, sometimes you want to use this as a mating nuke setup. And in that case, you want entrance, entrance, entrance just for entrance diversity mating and but i was watching that's the way ian does it and i was watching him do that and then i watched him put his bees away and you you may or may know when his bee uh building his wintering building his pallets his two-way pallets they sit back to back in there so there'd be a big stack back to back two ways all the way down the row but at the end he's got a stack of three ways that he can't put back to back because there's one entrance on this side all the time, right? So then I, I developed this kind of pallet so that then in the winter, he could, you know, he could, or somebody in that situation could pop that that entrance. Well, let's just say it as it is. Carrie could put it on the other end. <laughs> yeah, just pop it out from this side. Like this would be the back. Pop that out from this side, put it on this side. And all your entrances are on one side. You can stick your nukes back to back and not only that but because these are identical in every way but these shims then um, you don't need to worry where the nukes are necessarily in your winter building they'll stack with the 10 frame boxes exactly the same because nice. the dimension of the pallet is 100 percent identical in that regard so the, the covers uh covers walk in <laughs> covers lock into the runners it's, it's all identical in every way so it seems like a good system. so i guess if you have all the entrances in one direction if you left it like that would you you think you'd get much drift in I, that situation I don't, to. I don't seem to i i run them i don't run these as mating nukes much so in my situation i actually just put a screw in that piece in the back to hold it in there full time because I don't really move it around in my situation. But so if all the entrances are one side, you don't notice that the bees drift between the three boxes that much? Or you can't really tell? 
I, how do you know that? Do you know it's drift or do you know it's just one queen that's not as strong as the other? I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to judge, I would imagine. Yeah. They're, I mean, they, they are variable, but maybe it's drift. I don't know. Perhaps. Okay. So what's your goal on how many of those you want to assemble today? I can typically do about 10. If I do if I do the, the shims and all, I can do about 10 in a day before I get four out. Just standing here is the determining factor. It's very hard on my, my hips. Uh, but I, I've got this one and two more. And then I'm done building three ways. Uh, some of these over here, I haven't put the shims on. I haven't done that yet. Uh, but then I have 100 new ways to build. So I'll be at this a while. Yeah, so you definitely have your work cut out. 10, 10 good days. And, you know, these days I'll maybe get two or three days a week in. Right? So that's three, four weeks. And then once that's all done, uh, there's only one thing left really to do. Two things, but is to bring them all back, flip them over, run them through the table saw because this this front end. I took the easy way out when I cut the plywood, and I, uh, the the pallet is typically like twenty one and five eighths front and back. But typically uh, this year, what I did was I I just see it there. I just cut the plywood in half. I cut the sheets in half, so it's 24 inches. I left the extra in the front, and then I just flip that upside down, and I run that nice and flush. But I, I tell you what, uh, watching your other uh, constructions there with the lids and stuff like that, where you come back and trim it, the thing is it always looks perfect when you're done doing it that way. It's a nice, like, when I trim that and all the pieces, all the pieces that are involved, because in that in that cover there's two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Uh, if you look at the side of that cover, if you look at the side of the cover. There's one, two, three, four, five, six pieces uh, to joint together, right? And when I put that together and then I run that through the table saw and trim every piece at the same time it is 100 percent exactly perfectly smooth and lined up all six pieces all at one time and i'll tell you that is a thing of beauty i i love doing that it and i really finishes it off nice i saw how you uh stopped that breakout by starting one side and then flipping it over and cutting it and then i flip it over that way and it and just then, and, then, and then on the covers of course doing the round overs here all the way around whatnot and then after all of that said and done it gets shipped off to the wax dipper to dip yeah. them yeah this one's this one i don't know that this one's been used it's been in the shop here forever uh it's wax dip and i built it probably four or five years ago uh, so that's just one i keep here to you know if i'm doing if i'm doing runners I can take this and set it on my runner to make sure I've got my dimensions just right because you don't want to build a whole whack of pallets and realize the runners are too far apart and they won't lock into your cover. That would suck. That would suck. And it does suck. Guess me. Guess guess how I know that. <laughs> it's like figuring it out the hard way, right? And I've glued everything together, right? It's like, oh my god, what do I do? And by the time you realize that all the glue is dry. Oh yeah. And, usually <laughs> and i mean you you really uh i'm not a woodworker but just watching your videos and stuff that you in these chats that we've done like this where you've shown assembly and putting them together that uh you definitely learned the lesson of measure twice and cut once oh man i specifically remember when i started um I've, I've toyed with carpentry and stuff my whole life since I was a little kid, but I never really took it seriously as an adult until maybe 10 years ago or so, 10, 12 years ago. And I, 
remember when I did having a conversation with my wife one day saying, you know what? I'm very frustrated because it seems like every time I cut a piece of wood, it's wrong. And it's going to be too short. You know, it's not like, oh, well, I'll cut that again, right? Uh, I wasted so much material because I cut it wrong. And so measure twice, cut, cut once. And the, the one particular thing that helped me out the most is a program called SketchUp. I use SketchUp to model all of my builds, almost all of my builds, uh, so that I can see on the screen that this is going to work. And then all of the, I can take all the dimensions right off the screen to the table saw. And I almost never cut it wrong. I mean, I could get the table saw set wrong. The SketchUp right. box will tell me exactly what that should be. And I mean, now being a one, and I've been to your shop there, right? So, um, yeah. one of the things that I know just from being there is how your space is well utilized. I mean, it's uh, like in the well, I mean, in the honey house there, right? I mean. Yeah. We explained in that one video how you have to take stuff out and move it around different times a year to be able to utilize it the most efficient way. And we always see this view of your shop. But I know right off camera on the other side is an orange Kubota and a couple pallets of packed honey and, and stuff over yeah, there. Right? I've, I've rearranged the honey house now. So the Kubota actually can sit indoors because this was getting so full that he was sitting outside, which is not a big deal in the summer, uh, but the sun doesn't does get at it like everything else. So you're right. Of course, on this side, this is the honey that I've just brought from the packer. Um, I just got some empty pails sitting here, and then different honey that I've got here, pre-customer honey. I'm not too proud about this. Uh, now I was there two months ago. Yeah, and. Two months ago, the honey was up closer to the door yeah. by the by the porch, and the Kubota was there behind it. That's so right. Since yeah. you've emptied the bees out of the honey house, now you can move that. So you yeah, keep yeah, everything a little, more, a little more flexibility right now because the honey house is uh, um, the honey house is going to be filling up because these will be stored in there until they're ready to go to the customer. Uh, so, so these take up a lot of space. I, I, I put my my covers are in there now, but there's only four pallets. They they're small, so they fit on four pallets. These take up a lot of space. I'm going to take this as a compliment. He said his shed is less organized than mine. <laughs> well, and and you know what? This is another point uh, that, that in you know self defense, um, and I think people see they'll come in and see this place or the honey house or whatever. And they'll kind of say, wow, have you ever just got a lot of random crap in here? And there is, there is some random crap in here, but if you came in here every week, that would tell you a different story. It's different it's random crap. It's different <laughs> every week, every day, something else gets moved through here or, you know, like this, this here. Um, <laughs> Right outside the door, I've got material waiting to come in here to be built into pallets. So I've got material here on the floor. See, it's so congested, I can hardly move my camera. So I've got this pallet of, of plywood here and here. That's what I'm picking off to make the pallets. And then the finished pallets are sitting here. And when I'm got run out of space here then i'll take those run through the table saw stack them up wrap them and put them in the honey house so yeah it doesn't stay static very long at all <laughs> it doesn't stay static long at all it's not just a gradual crap there's, there's sufficient amount of crap in here but you know change the lot well my wife wanted to clean my office up the other day and i told her uh no, don't. I said, I know there's a bunch of junk everywhere, but if you move and put something somewhere, I'll still not know where it's at. If yeah. I move and put it somewhere, then I have a general idea. 
<laughs> yeah, less, less chance of finding it if somebody touches it. <laughs> I know I have things, and you know, I I have a few things that that they will sit in a general location, and I have will have no idea why they sit in that location, but don't move them because right. that's where I look for those things every time. Every time I need those. But you do some other things up there too, like uh, I know your wife was helping you build frames because someone ordered manufactured yeah. frames from you. Let me get, let me bring you over here. So my wife is, uh, she's a lovely petite woman, and I'm more of a giant. She calls me a giant. So what we did? I like the term ogre. Ogre. <laughs> I, I say caveman. When we got married, I, I said to her, you know, if, if there's ever a time you, do, you don't understand what I'm thinking, just think caveman, and it'll right. all be clear. Fire. <laughs> so, so I set up this little station here, which is lower than the, the table saw station by a good amount. And she'll come here and build frames. See, she built 100 mediums for me here for customer. Uh, Which is um, unusual because you don't use mediums. I don't use mediums as a rule, but I have some, right? And and I keep some here for customers because people order things. So I'll have a couple boxes of foundation, two or three hundred medium frames, you know, ready right. to be assembled. Yeah. So sorry for moving the camera around so much. Well, it's nothing like one of my videos. Yeah. Without yeah, at least a tripod. Not really on a tripod. <laughs> Someone now I gotta get up. Take the show for a second. I gotta look out the window. Someone just honked the horn. Oh, somebody's coming to buy honey. So okay, I gotta interact with, with the chat with the comments. So put your comments in there and we'll Yeah, I'm just looking at the comments on my channel though. And they actually parked. Where do you think of all the places in my place they could park? In the B yard? Over right in, in the bees. Yeah. So, well, they want yeah. money, so they have to go to the bees. Right? They have to go to the bees, right? Yeah. That makes sense. So, and then the, I'll have to walk That's out there. So. Nice work. Thanks. I'm going to make you large on the screen. Oh, don't make me any bigger. Ta da! Because I'm going to, I got to walk out there and bigger. check this customer. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm big enough. <laughs> I'm big enough. <laughs> so, uh, Gonna have you build all my gear and pay for road trip. <laughs> Do good work, thanks, DC. Yeah, DC said I. I thought maybe you'd uh, grown up in in woodworking. Well, kind of. I had a lot of good woodworkers in my life, uh, so they introduced it to me. Uh, introduced me to it when I was young, and I did do some of it. Sure. Um, I actually growing up, I used to help when there was time to build a, a house or an addition to a house or a, you know a garage or a building or a granary or you know I'd help doing that but that's framing and sheeting and I did some roofing and whatnot as I was a, a young person I didn't really do a lot of uh, finish work like fine woodworking I had never really worked hardwood until you know 10 or 12 years ago and that was a real treat Hardwood is so much, in so many ways, so much nicer to work with than softwood is, in my opinion, because I can mill a piece of hardwood, like a piece of steel, get it so accurate. Softwood, that's uh, a little different. It's, it's not as easy to get things bang on accurate. And I think softwood does uh, change size a lot more through very humidity, uh, atmospheric humidity. Um, uh, you learned where to work with James Carpenter, cabinet maker. Yeah, no, well, yeah, learned it. Yeah, I I kind of did because I studied I studied some fine woodwork ten or twelve years ago. So I learned a lot of techniques. I'll show you something here that I made just off camera. <laughs> Very covered in dust. This is the project that I built. Uh, one of my very first projects, actually. Uh, there's a 
TV show website, PBS kind of thing called, uh, what is it called, Whitsmith Shop? And they have some really good, really good tips and techniques and videos on how to do things with cover dust. So this is a little clock. It's a craftsman style clock made out of white oak. And the the key to this project, this came from it's a it's a ceramic tile. It came from a place down near uh, Detroit, Michigan. There's a company that makes these by hand. They're kind of expensive, but they're sure nice. Uh, so the key with this one is it's all handwork. Uh, other than some rough cutting, maybe on table saw, um, it's all mortise and tenon joinery. All all of these these uh, rails that are mortised into here, and uh, it's all white oak. All of these, it fell it fell on the floor and it broke the edge. So this. Uh, these are screws that hold the top on, and then there's uh, oak blanks put in there, and finished uh, finished flush. So I really like that project. It's uh, it's really pretty, and I learned a lot doing that because, like I say, it's all hand work, hand cut mortises and whatnot in there. Yeah, thanks, DC. I'm uh, just reading the, the comments so I keep up with you. And I built another one. This is one of the first things I actually designed. And forgive me, everything gets so dusty in here. Um, but it's kind of a little clock too, right? But this is this is two pieces of oak glued together, and uh, made the classic craftsman square hole design here and i used my mortiser for that there's a machine it's kind of like a drill bit but it'll it's like a drill press but it'll drill square holes oddly enough uh and then this is just a little clock movement from lee valley and i actually designed that whole thing i don't think i got the dimensions quite right the overhang is pretty big and all that but you know it's a nice little clock right and i love white oak i've got this this is a minwax stain it's called early American. Uh, so it, I think it, it kind of uh, emulates uh, Stickley's work that he did uh, way back hundred and some years ago. I uh, used a lot of white oak and cherry wood and uh, they used to fume, they would take white oak and they would fume it with uh, ammonia. Don't do that, it's very dangerous. And the ammonia reacts with the tannins in the white oak darkens it and gives it a real depth um, but you don't want to do that nowadays it's very dangerous and it's much easier just to put a stain on this one i actually put my brand on there Eight woodcraft and crafted eight woodcraft so yeah little things i'm back <laughs> hey that's my second lost sale of the week being out of honey sucks. Oh, that sucks. So it's a good thing I sold it all. Bad thing I did didn't have enough to keep selling. Uh, DC, it can be difficult to get the sanding to blend and have equal balance to the eye. Um, expand on that. How much you think for controlling eye? Okay. okay. So sanding. If you're trying to stain pine, it's it's a losing battle. You can't stain pine and make it look nice. It doesn't it just doesn't work. It's blotchy. Uh, yeah, very blotchy. Best you can do is a sanding sealer or or a, a good layer of uh, lac, and then try to stain it. But um, I wish I could show you. There was a coffee table I built out of white oak. This is a beautiful big coffee table, about 42 inches square, and a cabinet with drawers on each side and everything. It's gorgeous. And I used the technique that I learned for that. I'm trying to think of, of how I can describe that to you. Uh, I'll use this piece of wood here. So uh, just like the, the white oak in those projects I showed you, I stained that. 
one of the problems you have is that end grain, remember end grain is a lot like a, a collection of straws. So the end grain will soak up a lot more stain than a, than a face grain or side grain. And what the coffee table was, was the, the edge of it um, went just down like this, like a lot of tables, you just have, it's called a thumbnail kind of a thing. It looks like the end of your thumb, like the end of your thumb. Uh, so what you get is you go from a, a base grain on the top, angled down through the end grain along the edge. And what I didn't want was this ribbon around the outside, or at least on two ends of this, that was dark stain. So what I did there was I sanded the whole project up to, I think, 320 grit. And then I hand sanded, actually hand sanded most of that project. It was quite something. And I hand sanded the end grain on the end of the coffee table, 400 grit. It might've been 220 and 400, but anyway, it was a higher grit. It was a quite a bit higher grit. And so the end grain was sanded to a far, uh, smoother and then therefore more closed finish. Uh, so then when I sand, when I stained it, the two came out perfectly. It was a perfect transition from face grain to end grain as it came around that detail on the coffee table because the end grain was sanded to a, a higher grit uh, to close off those pores. So I was very happy that that turned out. It wasn't my idea. I learned that from some of the stuff I'd studied. So. Yeah. Well, I tried. I like to. That's what goes on when I can't sleep at night. It's like, how can I? How can I make it better? How can I make it nicer? You know, when I've got hundreds of it to do, I have to make sure I can do it within reason. You know, if I if I had all winter to make one, then it would be a nice. You know. The uh, yeah, I'm having the same problem there, Danny. Danny Ray says that he uh, he needs to buy a bucket of honey. He only has 20 bottles left. I am out, and you wouldn't think it's a big thing on April 19th, but you still got May, June, two and a half months before you have any. So for me, May, June, July, and August. <laughs> Oh, you still got a bit left though. DC's talking about the brand. So this is the brand I use. It's a very basic little brand. I just use my propane torch to heat it up. And uh, how long do you have to torch that before you can get an it, effective brand? It takes a couple of minutes to warm it up. It's pretty easy to keep it warm because it's got some got some mass to it, but uh, it does take a couple of minutes to get it. You got to get it really cooking. But I can run maybe two three or four brands if i get a really nice and steamy hot and if you want to people ask you so where'd you get the brand okay brand new dot uh i don't know dot com brand new that's the company they're down in california that's a an in-house design i just gave them the name so i just chose that design they already had and then said put faith woodcraft on the bottom but you can send them any artwork you want and they'll make a brand right out of that. It just obviously costs you more money. So how far behind are we putting you with this live stream? <laughs> Not at all. I'm pretty tired. This week has gone by really fast. Um, spoiler alert on the vlog tomorrow. <laughs> I was on the road most of the last two days. I went down to Ian's on Wednesday and I had to go do my Winnipeg run on, on Thursday. And it was, oh, I'm tired. I used to be able to do that when I was younger. I could drive halfway to the West Coast and catch a nap and then drive the rest, but I can't hardly drive to Ian's back now. Sound like me. I can't even hardly stay up a full day, <laughs> <laughs> full work day. Of course. It's a two-hour drive to Ian's, and then we sat in the honey house and talked for three hours, and then a two-hour drive home. So it's still uh, a long day. <laughs> I've been getting up, I don't know, early for me, right? Getting up around, I don't know, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, and then going out and doing my first round in the bee yard, whatever that is, 
Um, and usually it's I'm sweat through by the time I come back in and then I get something to drink and let my bee suit dry out a little bit and then put it back on and go back out for another little bit. I'm here. I'm just going to walk off camera. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's getting to where, uh, like it's 82 degrees right now. And apparently when I walked outside for the customer, it had rained a bit, uh, just like a quick downpour and then was done. And, uh, so, you know what that means when you put heat in a little bit of moisture, humidity. <laughs> humidity. Yeah, humidity for sure. So one of the more important pieces of equipment in a wood shop is the wood shop fridge. When, it, when it's got, as uh, Todd calls them, barley pops. You can put a lot of different things in a wood shop fridge. <laughs> I go out in the honey house. And DC is putting comments up here and i don't know I, i'm looking at comments on my channel so i don't know if you're seeing them bob i uh, see the it'll have a little chain link on it so i see all the comments it's just sometimes i gotta think where they're coming from he's looking at the you know he's, he's being complimentary and i really appreciate that he's, he comes from experience too so my experience in 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 wood stuff is not is is not as much carpentry and woodworking necessarily i grew up uh kind of around lumber process uh we the old fellas in my community were, were log drivers <laughs> that's i think that's really hilarious because how many people could say that uh and so i grew up around people who ran sawmills we ran a, a planer mill that you know we ran right up to Right until the time the thing was over 100 years old. And uh, so that was that was lumber to me. It was just lumber. But uh, so that, you know, that just went into building, building like that. Yeah, I, I, I put the wrong thing up here. I, I could have put the other one up and saw the chat. But I don't see it all. Well, I did a... I put a little video out. I think it's 12 and a half minutes or something a little bit earlier today where uh, I went out. I started the video. Again, I'm here just off camera. Okay. <laughs> I started the video um, specifically to go check the uh, wax foundation to see if this little two-frame nuke I moved into a six-frame with four frames of foundation had started anything. And it was probably... I don't know. It's probably two o'clock in the afternoon. So it really wouldn't have been a full day when I was out there looking at it. And I mean, I was surprised how quick they got on to uh, that um, that freshly waxed foundation to start drawing it out. And then I checked one of the nukes that I put in uh, 19 days ago today. And it is doing... Uh, really well she's got seven frames of brood in three weeks and some wow. of that was uh that was one of the ones that i actually checkerboarded some foundation in with them and stuff like that um so i mean she really just went to town laying it up so they're doing pretty good all my other nukes look pretty much like that one some of them just have a second box on them uh the ones that have the second box are the ones that I actually had put some drawn foundation in there with them to begin with. So they're about a week ahead. Um, so maybe this weekend they'll get a second box as well so they can start moving up. I just. That and was an interesting little experiment you did with side by side, you know, put foundation well, and put drawn comb. And, and you don't think about it that much, but when yeah. you're starting a new colony, one week is a big difference. I mean, it's a pretty big difference one week um, compared to them having to draw it all up. I mean, that's going to take them a few days, right? And if, if you got a queen that's Johnny on the spot, so to speak, and she gets on and starts laying it before the workers can start plugging it full of nectar and stuff, <laughs> that that's pretty important. But I've, I've seen that quite a few times where you put some foundation in, like, for example, if you catch a swarm or something, you put foundation in, 
and swarms are just going to draw comb like crazy and the, the bees will draw the foundation out just a little bit and, and there's an egg, and in, there's it. egg <laughs> in it <laughs> it's like they've got to draw that out like four times as much before you know it can house that pupa and then cap it <laughs> and yeah, and then cap and then, it. She, she's just walking around. Oh, look, comb. She just yeah. squats down and dumps an egg in it, and it's not even drawn at all, hardly. So the thing that oh, I yeah. find that's amazing about that is it kind of myth busts for me. I've always said, and I'm sure people that have watched the streams and stuff have heard me say that if you've only got a little bit of bees, they're only she's only going to lay up enough for them to cover. Not this time of year. This well, time of year, because it's yeah, warm yeah. enough outside where they don't have to moderate the temperature that much, she'll well, just go crazy. I don't know that she regulates it. They regulate that. And often they'll regulate that by cannibalizing the eggs. She just goes about her job. And then they decide <clears throat> how much they can support. And they'll cannibalize everything else. So but then once it's that. capped, yeah, they don't stay on it that much. Well, I mean, you can if the weather gets cold, and then the, and the, it'll uh, it'll chill. We see rings of cap cap uh, chill brood all the time here in the spring because I may get some here tomorrow night. It's going to be about minus four uh, uh, tonight. I mean, minus four tonight. I kind of was I was going to bring my bees in this week. Just thought I'll just there's only five pallets of bees out there, so I thought, I'll just bring them in. I'll put them in there for a couple of days and take them out again. Uh, and then it started raining like crazy. I can't move my tractor. So I can't hardly walk. It's so muddy. So it's like, okay. Well, with, a few days. <laughs> with the way it is here right now, um, 19 days ago, that was three frames of bees and brood and basically two foundations. Um that came in these nukes i knew and that's the way i bought them like that right last year it was just three frames of bees this year because of the box difference it was three frames of bees and two blank foundations same thing just a couple more frames and foundation in there and uh so for her to have 19 days later seven frames of brood she's getting it i mean she's absolutely just doing everything she can which is good because in three weeks from now, it'll be the first week in May. And guess what happens? The honey flow will be going like crazy. So hopefully I can uh, pull. I should. I it, it hasn't shown it so far, but for some reason, Mother Nature has its way of averaging itself out. Right. Um, and I'm going to have to call BS. Because the last two seasons, everyone says, oh, spring's here. We're early. But, yep. okay, so the bloom started a little bit early. But then it kind of cooled off again. So then the other flowers and plants still aren't doing what, you know, when they're supposed to. And and now they're kind of on schedule here. So <clears throat> the snow we got. Um, and, and I have. Again, spoiler alert for the vlog tomorrow, but uh, there's an inch of snow or something out there. It started snowing. Well, it snowed most yesterday, but it didn't didn't uh, start collecting until evening. <clears throat> but I'm not a I'm not a snow fan. But uh, I was expecting it. I absolutely was expecting it because every time I look through my pictures that that I take in the spring, I always have a picture of the apiary with a good blanket of snow on. In April, so I was waiting for the snow, and well, that's exactly what we got. And we got away lucky; we didn't get that much, so it's all right. It'll be gone tomorrow. Look at this comment: installed four nukes and three packages. I used drawn comb, four frames, and two frames of food from last year per y'all's recommendation from Lee's live stream. The packages are doing close to as good as the nukes because of the drawn comb. Yeah, it it does. It makes. I mean. And I've heard it, but this is the first year I implemented it, right? And then I did the side-by-side -side and saw that they were nowhere near as 
Uh, nice yeah, as the, the other ones. I got into this as Bob because I got blue here, but I don't think this really bothers the stream. You just let me know if it does. No, nah, usually it's not not too loud. Except for today, that one's pretty loud. Today. Pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty loud. And we got and the air again. <laughs> now the air compressor mutes itself out, but that is still loud. That's funny. Well, you know, and the problem is with the uh, a lot of times we use foundation because we don't have the drawn comb. It's a perfect thing if you've got a dead out to use that uh, old comb when you're putting new nukes and stuff in. So I kind of did what Brad says. If you're going to draw a foundation, put it in the honey super. Let them draw it in the honey super. And, I, uh, I don't I don't ever draw a foam in a brew chamber. Ever. So, so typically, if you needed to, if you needed to draw a comb, you would use last year's honeycomb and put it right. in the brood box for your right. brood, and then draw a new. I have the freedom to do that because they run all these. Right. Right. No, I have the freedom to do that because I run all one size of frame. You don't have to run all deeps to do that. You can run all medium. Okay, I just want to qualify that. But you can run all shallows if you want, if that's your thing. But you know what I'm saying. But the the less different sizes you have uh, are better. Yeah. Like I run, I run some mediums, mostly for comb production, comb honey. They work really nice for comb honey. Two more. One more. Perfect. And all this time we've been live 47 minutes. You've glued one piece of wood down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is not a how to. <laughs> well, I appreciate the chat while I'm uh, doing my thing in here. It sure gets, you know, I appreciate the work. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate the work. I love getting orders, everything. It just, uh, just the same thing over and over. So it's not very exciting. It's kind of redundant. It's, but it's before just, you're done, everybody in Manitoba will have uh, Faith Apiary's uh, woodenware. That's my goal. And, uh, that's you know, problem. you'll go by somebody's yard and be like, wow, look at that. That's a nice looking pallet. Oh, that's one of mine. I've heard you say it when we've watched uh, uh, one of Ian's videos. You see that pallet right there? I made that pallet. <laughs> I, met a young guy. I met a young guy, Ian. He came over to get some stuff. We talked for quite some time. And uh, he was showing Ian what he was doing. He says, yeah. He says, we actually built an easy loader. And... Uh, and it looked like a nice unit too. He said it worked pretty good. Uh, and he was showing the easy loader, but in showing the easy loader, he showed his two way pallet system. He said, Yeah, we're just kind of doing what you're doing with the pallets and everything like that. And I got looking really close at the pictures he was showing on his phone. And I looked at that and I said, That's a really cool uh, cover and uh, pallet interlocking system that you've got there. Yeah, yeah, it works really good. He says, That's a, that's a you know, good design. It works really well. And he had, he had no idea where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> At least he didn't say. <laughs> Both Ian and I are sitting there struggling because. Because <laughs> everybody's using it now. Well, I don't know. I, I, I've never seen anybody use it before. I kind of, you know, quote, invented it. But maybe they did. I don't know. But I just thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing it. Like, I, I just love seeing it. You know, Jack did a bunch of. And what Brian's got doing. jokes this afternoon. Yeah. He said Brad can go into business with Tom, and they can call their business Hog Bacon. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Brad Tom Bacon and Brad Hart. Going on bacon. <laughs> <laughs> or Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon. <laughs> then there would be a such thing as Canadian bacon. Well, if Tom moved to Canada, he'd be Canadian bacon. <laughs> Ran out of glue. And you buy that stuff by the case. I do. I do. <clears throat> hey, look what came in today. When I take these off, I cut the end off so that the end doesn't go through my garbage bag. Look what came in today. You know, that? if you, a if you lid? it's a tote lid. So if you followed it, of course, the tote I bought for my syrup had a lid on it. And, yeah. and then you lost making one. sure that I put my tote lid back on every time because I had to buy another tote lid. Well, I went out there the other day after I drove down to the store somewhere in my truck, came back. Guess what? No, no tote lid. Was gone, so I had to buy another one. So put a string on that. I'm gonna have to do something to it. Yeah, this is my my, my clue. <laughs> Just a little bit. Is that similar to liquid nails? I think so. It's PL Premium. It's it's one of the best glues ever. You can glue cement together with this stuff. Really good glue. Here's a neat little thing. It's almost too good when you put it in the wrong spot. This caulking gun. Um, you know, it's stuck. I can't even show you. Here we are in the middle of the day, and there's 51 people watching. So the, you, you cut the tube off, but there's there's a seal inside you have to break, right? There's a little thing on there. Just to pop it open. Break that seal. Throw it away and Bob's your uncle. Until it glues itself to itself. Which it kind of did. <laughs> so then instead of ne needing a tool to break the seal, you need a tool to get the seal breaker thing broken loose. Hey, Keith, it rained here for so long, I didn't even realize it rained until I went outside. Rained just a few minutes. It was done. And you've got all that pre-marked already. It's so soggy here, man. My tractor is is grounded. I can't I can't move it anywhere. I can hardly move it on the gravel areas of my yard. Terrible. Terrible terrible. Yeah, I champ for the end of my runner. That is. So when you have your lid and you're trying to put these together with your forklift, put the hives on top of one another. I round this over and I also chamfer this corner so that when you just about get it right, it'll slip in place instead of just catch on. The, you know, if it's square, the first ones I made square. And you wouldn't believe how close you can get that, and it won't drop in there. So I rounded that one, and chamfered that one, and they slide in together. Oh, really great nice. in. Yeah. It's a little, a little thing, you know, it makes your day so much better because of that. Phil said, many people don't know you can click the movable handle forward after uh, place the glue and it won't keep oozing out. Well, I do that, but it still comes out. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, especially when you first uh, open the tube because you, you squeeze it, it pressurizes a bit. So it, uh, it always, uh, it, it does cut it down a lot. So you pack it in place with the staple and then screws. 
you tacked it in place with a staple, then come back with a couple screws? Yeah, just because I want to get it, I want to get it perfectly flush with the two by four on the side. And this one is actually pretty good, but I could make it better. And this is how I'm going to make it better. This is this is why I'm doing this because this flyway and this runner are exactly the same length. Okay, so if I put the flyway and the, and the riser together, and then I go to put the runner on and and it doesn't line up on the end, it means that either the the riser, the two by four riser, is tipped for some reason, or the plywood isn't flat. And again, so it's so it's both and they're tipped, you know, either that way or that way. So then what I do, my clamps. This clamp is called spreader clamp. See how I've got it turned so Upwards. that it, it'll it'll push open instead of instead of pull closed. Put that in here. And just give that a little push. And then drive it through them. So now, if there's any bow in the plywood or you know anything wrong? Now I can line it up perfectly, top and bottom. Because I think what you don't want, what you don't want, is your pallet sitting like this. Because right. It's going to rock around, and I think you don't want it sitting like this either, because then your stacks of honey supers are going to be splayed out. Hit the floor. Well, that could even, if it's bowed, it could even, uh, the boxes may not even fit correctly in those U-clips too well, right? Yeah, yeah, you never know. So <clears throat> that's just why I go to that extra step to make sure that this, because I know this runner and this plywood are the same length. So there's no reason they should line up perfectly. <laughs> Hey, Ian, good to see you. Hey, boss. Yeah, it is a good day for Shaw. Thanks for the visit yesterday. Yesterday, the day before. Yesterday, they all... They all... Uh, Run together. They all, they all melt together. Yeah. So he gets to... Get to sit on YouTube and watch somebody build his equipment. Is it, is it still snowing out of your, your way, Ian? It uh, snowed here uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> you poor thing. How do you do it? I don't know. That was that was two years too soon, too. Yep. But I would like a place where it just kind of stayed 70. 70, 74 degrees, right in that zone all year long would be perfect. Well, I think it's snowing here. Uh oh, yeah, it's still snowing a little bit. Okay, so that's all I'm doing on that one. Because I find it I find it a bit nicer to let that all dry before I do the top. Um, you know what? Not a big deal if you guys are here. Let's do the top. Let's do the top. So, let's start with some glue. I like your little glue container there, too. Yeah, this is pretty handy. Type on three waterproof food grade glue. This is that. It's called a glue bot. Can you see the lettering on that? Uh, I can't see it. 
It's called a glue bot, B O T. Yeah, glue dash bot. I think it's uh, look look online for fast cap. And I'm trying to print this with fingers. Fast cap glue bot. That's the one. They got a uh thanks, buddy. Ian likes the equipment. I really really appreciate that. Well, there's an Amazon link that I'm dropping in the chat. I don't know if it's going to go to your chat or not, but uh, for the Gluebot 16 ounce and a set of two silicone glue brushes. The silicone glue brushes are nice. That's what I'd be using. So, uh, 18 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Or, I believe. They have. Don't get me going, Norman. Don't get me going, man. They have a six ounce one and a sixteen ounce one. Well, this is probably the sixteen ounce. Of course, that's a bit of a foreign system to me. So, so I'll drop that link. As well, if anybody likes those things, fast cap. Kind of the reason it's called fast cap. This company, they kind of kind of are innovative, and they're not afraid to make different things. Uh, the the name fast cap is that what they make is little plastic caps that you put on when you build something or have some. A cabinet or something that has a screw and then you put that little cap in the hole to cover the head of the screw right that's a fast cap <laughs> loading brad's equipment puts me in a good mood after loading mine. oh that's nice to hear that because that's you know like i was showing you that little round over and that chamfer that can change your day man that really can especially when you're loading a, a brand new international brand new brand new international slash chevrolet truck with a brand new welded deck on there that's a nice truck saw that, that is truck. a nice truck saw that truck by wednesday saw i'm just carrie glad it's got an international it. emblem do it i saw carrie driving it for a bit too I, I, you know carrie drove the new truck yeah. Well, I mean, she both moved it around the yard, I saw. She's probably getting her company's qualifications under her belt. Her driver qualifications. His brother says it rides rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work truck. It's a Chevy. I think his brother drives around. Is he a Ram driver? Well, which brother? Uh, one's one's a one's a plane driver. Maybe it's the maybe it's the uh, pilot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this truck is rough. It's it's like the knee would have said, Have you felt your landings? I was just gonna say, I've felt your landings. Don't judge. <laughs> yeah. So Adam the Dodge guy. These uh these these shims in the middle, they need to go in just the right place. I've got these little spacers put those in i poured over how to do this just right and you see this this one's a little different on the three-way so this isn't ian's equipment because he's not getting three ways um so the two-way center shim is like this it's a, this is actually a, a rabbit because it's got two sides 
go to shoulder base. So that goes up against the back shim. Whereas on the three-way, the front one, and this is the, the place where you put that two, that uh, clip, that box clip. The front part that sticks out in front of the hive is just this part. On the two-way, that's a separate piece that goes across. So this is actually a dado because it's got three sides, it's got two shoulders and a base. So there's your education for today. Rabbits have two sides, dados have three. Right. And if that were, here's getting technical. That's a dado. If, if because it runs across the grain, if it ran with the grain, it would be a groove. <laughs> So you didn't get your groove on while you were making this then? Do not get your groove on <laughs> while doing this because it should be a dado. If you get your groove on, you did it in the wrong direction. But that kind of looks like it's got a a dado and a rabbit on one end. This one? The dado side. Uh, or is it the same? Maybe it was just the camera angle I was looking at it. No, it's straight on the end. <laughs> Ian liked the groove on comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. This just got. It's the same height on both sides of it. On, straight on that end. Gotcha. Because this part, this rear shim, takes up the other side of that, right? And bad things. If I was doing this, I would have to make those spacer shims every time because I would lose them somewhere in my scrap pile every time. Well, I make them every year because I do. I lose them. I make this every year because I'll lose it. Crazy. Crazy though that happens. Oh, I'm not watching the cat. Well, Break out the Kraken and everyone will be getting their groove on like Charlie. Can you imagine what my palace would look like if I was uh, enjoying Kraken right now? If you released the Kraken during the middle of the workday? Yeah. Yeah, it might get more done. You just work longer because you would lose track of time. Right. I do that anyway. Boy. And you wouldn't be feeling the pain. <laughs> no, I wouldn't feel the pain. No pain felt. That is there. Hey, that's a good idea. Can't believe you said paint the spacer so you don't throw them away. Yep. Well, they do have paint on them, see? I kind of sit here. Sit with my... So that's uh, that's it. That's a three way, and not the kind of three way. Um, it's uh, just needs to be trimmed after the glue dries. This this stuff squeezes out bad. So after it dries, I'll trim that with my utility knife. Yeah. So the only thing left for that is clips. Yeah. So this is how I do the clips. I'll show you. I always have a box. These boxes are exact 11 inches wide. They're exactly 11 inches wide. Don't forget it's a 7 8 box. If you're building on three quarter, then it might be uh, 10, and, 10 and three quarter wide. 10 and, yeah, 10 and quarter. However, uh, this is what I do because I need to get this center one. I need to get this center one just right because it has to be captured between two clips, right? Right. So it's got to be bang on. So align this box up with my center shim. 
so that it's kind of equidistant, nicely lined up on those pins. And then I like to use this pencil because I can, I don't want to draw right down. I want to angle that so that the line is right below the edge of the box. So if you'd have got your groove on, you wouldn't have to mark it with a pencil. It just put up a groove. On. <laughs> Could add a groove right down the middle. <laughs> so then, uh, I can take my my clip, you know, my drill. I like to drill these so that it doesn't split the wood. This got crap. Danae says Brad is like the Bob Ross of woodworking. Happy little boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I look and see if I can. I just want to see that line in the middle of the screw hole. And just a little bit of a drill. I don't want to go all the way through. I just want to go through this, or at least most of the way through this piece of wood. So it doesn't break out when you run the screws in? Right. These clips get really expensive. I think when I first started buying these, they were about they were about sixty cents, and now they're about a buck and sixty cents. Everything's going up so much. So, okay. So here's one thing that's different between the two way and the three way is this screw, because on a two way pallet, these screws will go through into the two by four riser. So you've got a lot of meat there. Three-way, you don't have as much meat because there's nothing under this. Just the plywood. So what I've done is I bought a, a number 10 inch and a quarter screw, the pan head screw, thread all the way up. It's a nice, nice diameter. It's got lots of meat there. I'm just demoing it. Not put it on. I'll start one before I, I'll start them both before I tighten them up. So if I did that right, then that screw shouldn't be screwed. It doesn't. Uh, so that's it. That's the complete thing. Uh, I don't put those on at this point, partly because I have to trim these, but I also... We'll give the clips and screws to the customer uh, because once that way it gets out, wax dipped underneath as well. Well, they'll wax dip it, um, but also for transport and stuff. You don't want to damage harder clip. to stack and everything with the clips on. Uh, so I just give the customer a box of screws and a box of clips. I mean, if he wants me to clip them. When I deliver, that's fine. I'll do it. it. Doesn't take that long. So yeah, so that's the that's the deal. So looks good. I'm sure glad to. I'm sure glad Ian likes equipment. That's my goal. You know, I want customers to enjoy the equipment. Final trim. Off Final to the trim. wax dipper. Delivered to the customer with clips. Yeah. So these are all coming back. And the, the wax dipping company, boy, they're sure good to me. I'll go there with a whole trailer load and I'll say, these two pallets I want to dip while I wait. So no problem. Way they go. Uh, is there? Yeah. You see, you see Ian tipping up his, his uh, boxes the way he does. On his channel, and I think if that angled part wasn't there, he tipped that box up. I think it might interfere with the front of the box. Might Maybe. rub on the front of the box. Yeah, it might be harder because you you kind of then have to pull it straight up to get it clear. Depending on how tight uh, the clip is, I don't make them perfectly tight. 
there are a good three eighths slop in there. So these boxes can move back and forth like that uh, once they're clipped together. But that's the idea. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so, so I'll, you know, I'll make a bit of equipment for me, some covers, some pallets, and then I'll buy I'll buy a bunch of these six frame boxes when I go there. They'll dip my pallets, they'll dip my covers, and then I can bring those back for myself. And uh, a few of these are for another customer. Um, so I might even be able to deliver those on the way back. Thanks, fresh. <laughs> And they said, got to run, Brad. Thanks for reminding us uh, just how much YouTube can slow our work down. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see ya. Well, That's we've been awesome. going for an hour and 15 minutes, guys. So we just thought it'd be a nice little uh, a nice little stream here of, with Brad in the wood shop. And you get to see what he's working on today and how he puts it together. And uh, thought we'd share that with you. I offered nothing but side commentary. So, well, <laughs> as normal. Nice Just to have a conversation. The, it's always nice to uh, be able, you know, when you're talking to the screen and I'm looking at somebody across from me on the other channel, and it definitely makes the flow go much better during a stream. Yeah, it's, it is difficult if you're the only one. So, at any rate, guys, we appreciate you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this. Charlie's on tonight at 8 o'clock, uh, what I saw. Uh, I dropped a video earlier today. Brad's vlog comes out tomorrow morning, as, as it does every week. So, every week. So, be looking forward to those. And if you haven't liked, shared, and subscribed to those channels, please do that. We appreciate it. And, uh. We'll see you guys on the next stream. Thanks, everybody. Take Goodbye. care. Bye.